This week on Culture Q. Kristen Stewart is engaged and a celeb who might officiate their wedding. We chat with the filmmaker and star behind Trans Military. And Spain sees big wins for the queer community. It's Andy Luani here. And I'm Cheryl Lazar. This is Culture Q. And here are some of the highlights this week in queer culture. Starting off with the news that blew up everyone's group chats, Bicon Kristen Stewart is off the market officially. Back in 2019, the Twilight actor confirmed that she and screenwriter Dylan Meyer were dating during an appearance on The Howard Stern Show. The two met on a movie set around 2015, but didn't begin dating until 2019. Commenting on their whirlwind romance, Stewart told Stern, I think good things happen fast. She recently returned to the show to promote her Princess Diana biopic, and told him how it all really went down. It was really cute. She did very well. And we're totally, we're, we're, sh we're marrying. It's, it's happening. The 31 year old also included her unusual wish list for her wedding, including who she wants to officiate. Guy Fieri from the Food Network officiates a lot of gay weddings. Who would have guessed? And to her surprise, during an appearance on the Today Show, she found out that wish just might come true. Hey, Kristen, Guy Fieri here, and I've heard through the Flavor Town grapevine that you are looking for a sweet, spiky hair to officiate for your wedding. <laughs> I'm all in. And this isn't the only queer wedding in the news right now. Actor Kel Penn, who just came out last week, tweeted that he saw Cardi B on his flight and dreamt that she officiated his wedding. Cardi then replied, I'm licensed to do that, so let me know. Well, it looks like the 2022 wedding season is shaping up to be a very interesting one. Congrats again to the happy couples. And you can check out Kristen Stewart and Spencer in theaters now. Last weekend, Marvel's newest movie, Eternals, hit the box office and has now become the second largest earning movie of 2021. And although the film has been rather successful stateside, it seems it's not going to be getting as wide of a release overseas. The film, which follows a star-studded cast of godlike characters, features Marvel's first openly gay hero, which has caused a bit of a stir in anti-LGBTQ countries. It was reported that Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and Qatar wanted a cut of the film that removed a same-sex kiss and any mentions of the character Fastos' queerness. But to Disney's credit, they actually refused to recut the film, which actually led to a ban in specific countries. The film's director, Chloe Zhao, has been open about the talks she had with Disney about not censoring the film and noting how important the film's representation is. I wanted to make sure it represents, really to reflect the world, the reality of the world we live in. It feels like the most natural thing. And one of the film's high profile stars, Angelina Jolie, commended this decision by saying, I'm proud of Marvel for refusing to cut those scenes out. The beauty of that relationship and that love. How anybody is angry about it, threatened by it, doesn't approve or appreciate it, is ignorant. There's a long history of studios giving in to homophobic countries' demands in the interest of profits, like 20th Century Fox, who recut Bohemian Rhapsody to feature all references of Freddie Mercury being gay, which literally how? But Disney's firm stance on the issue feels like it could be a turning of the tides. I think to show sexuality in a positive, in a compassionate, gentle, and loving way is a really, really good thing. This week in honor of Veterans Day, we got to talk to filmmaker Fiona Dawson and the subject of her award-winning documentary, Trans Military, Layla Ireland. The film looks at transgender service members fighting to serve openly in the U.S. military. My leadership was building a case against me. My purpose is to make sure that this doesn't happen to anybody else. It's so exciting to talk to you. So what are the stats around transgender people in the military and veterans? So studies show from the Williams Institute that there are around 134,000 individuals who are transgender and veterans and more than 15,000 trans people who are active duty. So as you can imagine, these people had really been wanting their story to be told for a very long time. Let's talk about the state of trans individuals in the military that you captured in the film at the time because it has changed. It came out in 2018. It has changed. However, I think the stories are really evergreen and very relevant because 
not only do we demonstrate how people were serving under a ban and it documents the story of ending the ban, it also helps educate us on the spectrum of gender. When the military is the most binary workplace you'll find, people are put into these buckets of like women do this and men do that. And so that's one of the things that I'm excited actually about the film. Stories like Layla's and her husband, Logan, are just so inspiring of what they went through and continue to go through. Yeah, Layla, I mean, why decide to put yourself out there like this in a very vulnerable way? The military has always been the force of change. They've always been the leader in change. And so having the change be made within the military and for the rest of society to see um, was important. We can't rely on other people to tell our story. The only people that can really tell our story is ourselves. And it created a movement. We're doing the same work as anyone else that has you know, volunteered to be in the military. We wanna be acknowledged and respected just like anyone else that puts on the uniform. I joined the military in 2003 and so I joined the military under Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Have I ever seen that in past documentaries? No, not really. We were talking about many marginalized intersectionalities. Um, me being a woman of color, me being trans, me being Asian American Pacific Islander, me being um, Native Hawaiian. Um, we were able to talk about the role models that we wanted to see and be um, in, in society. And Fiona, I wanna know what inspired you to document this at that time. Because it was wrong and it needed to be made right, <laughs> you know? I'm bisexual, cisgender, and I had done a lot of advocacy work along with hundreds of others around the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And it wasn't until after repeal that I myself understood that that allowed lesbian, gay and bi people to serve, but trans people were still banned. And so I was introduced to Layla back in 2012 and we just like hit it off. <laughs> just a month ago, you know, I get another message, like an email saying, hey, I just saw trans military for the first time and it's really changed my perspective on who trans people are. And I had no idea that they were already serving. I just love knowing that what we did together is actually having a tangible difference. Oh, I love that. And just like getting chills, just hearing you share that. And now where are we at now in the world? Because everyone keeps hearing these headlines. I mean, basically the ban is gone. Uh, trans service members can serve. The fight isn't over though. The fight is not far from done. Um, we have achieved open trans service. Right now, currently non-binary and genderqueer folks are still not acknowledged as part of um, the military society. And so, like I was saying earlier, you know, the military is is the force of change. They are the first to change and lead society, lead the rest of society in that change. A lot more troops are coming out and saying and, and openly identifying as I am transgender. And that's so that's so surreal to me. In addition to non-binary individuals, also realizing intersex individuals are still banned from yeah. the military due to outdated policy. Yeah, what about those impacted by the horrific laws, like the people that were kicked out? Are there services now to support those? The VA. Um, recently made a very strong decision to allow gender affirming surgeries for trans veterans. What's the one message you hope people take away from this film that's now on Reverie? <laughs> Don't be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> right? I would say allow trans service members to be seen and heard. Knowing that this film is on Reverie now, please see and hear the stories of trans individuals. We're just all spiritual beings having a human experience, just trying to do our best. <laughs> From the perspective of being a trans person, the one thing that I would like for people to take away is that your story is so powerful. You just have to want to be able to share that story. And there's gonna be a young person watching all of that and you're gonna be so inspirational to them. Oh, what a great conversation. You can check out Trans Military right now, right here on Reverie. Last Tuesday was election day for many states across the U.S. And for many of those races, the outcomes were very, very clear. Once all the victors have gone through their swearing-in ceremonies, there will be over 1,000 LGBTQ elected officials in the United States. I mean, 1,000. First of all, that is huge, and I wish we had time to shout out each and every one of them. But here's a few noteworthy highlights of the races. In New York City, voters elected six out LGBTQ members to its city council making a historic first. And in fact, that's not the only first we saw this election cycle. Over in Ohio, Dion Manley was elected to the Jefferson Gahana School Board, making him the first ever trans official elected in the state. And back in Pennsylvania, Xander Ornstein became the first non-binary person in the United States to ever be elected to a judicial position after winning their race for the county magisterial district court. These wins have constituents all over the country. 
hopeful and excited for the future. Journalist Mary Emily O'Hara tweets, It's the other gay Christmas when we watch hundreds of LGBTQ people get elected to office. But the candidates themselves are the ones who seem the most excited. Like Rebecca Maurer, who became Cleveland's first out LGBTQ woman elected to city council. And Dante Payne, who became the first queer and black man elected to the Olympia Washington City Council. This matters because our community is richer for having diverse representation to bring different approaches to solving our community's challenges. In times where it sometimes feels like we're moving backwards, it's a nice reminder to see that progress is still happening. So that's what's going on stateside. But Shira, tell us what's going on around the world. Well, Andy, this week we've got some big wins, but we've also got some notable setbacks. First, an LGBTQ rights advocacy group in China abruptly seized operations, causing many to wonder if there was government intervention. LGBT Rights Advocacy China was a group that fought for marriage equality, the protection of gay rights, and offered legal aid to China's queer community. But last week, suddenly, it was announced that their operation was coming to a close. Posting to the social media platform WeChat, the group said, we are deeply regretful to tell everyone, queer advocacy online will stop all of our work indefinitely. So yeah, while they didn't officially give a reason, this comes after many anti-LGBTQ attacks from the government, who actually shut down over 3,300 social organizations recently. And that's just a start. LGBTQ WeChat accounts run by universities are being deleted without any warning. And if you remember, this government crackdown even went as far as banning gay and effeminate characters from TV and video games. It is really scary to see groups like these disappearing at a time that we need them the most. But LGBT rights advocacy China gave us some hope at the end of their statement sharing this. There may still be many uncertainties in the future, but we look forward to the day when the clouds have dispersed and we can see the blue sky again. Now we've got some more positive news in Spain. The country has restored a policy to offer greater fertility options for the LGBTQ community. At one time, fertility treatments were free and available to all. But back in 2013, the former ruling party rolled back these rights, reserving them exclusively for straight married couples. But thank God all of that is about to change. On November 5th, Carolina Darias of the current ruling Spanish Socialist Workers Party repealed the conservative legislation and restored the rights once and for all. She wrote on Twitter, starting today, single women, lesbians, bisexuals, and transgender people will have access to reproductive technologies. Now, this is a huge step forward for Spain, but it's still just the beginning. The president of Spain's Federation of LGBTQ Rights Groups had this to say, we are not going to stop. We have history, we have memory, we have strength, we have conviction, and we are right. They will never stop us. And that was your look at queer news from around the world. Are you looking for something to watch this week? The good news is, Reverie's got you covered. First up is the series 5A, 5B, a wacky farce of urban survival, centering around a queer man and his friends making it in New York City. Up next, Little Miss Westie. This documentary follows two trans siblings, one who enters a beauty pageant as the first trans girl to compete, and the other, her older brother who competed in the pageant back when he lived his life as a girl. And finally, there is Cherry Bomb, a talk show exploring the world of sex, dating, and love for queer women. Featuring interviews and debates, the series is sure to enlighten and entertain. You can find all these and more streaming right here on Reverie. Well, it's that time in the show where we look back at all the things from this past week that made us say, Aww. First up, two queer conservative rabbis got married, marking an exciting first for the conservative Jewish movement. Rabbis Becca Walker and Ariella Rosen met at a rabbinical assembly retreat back in May 2018. And after instantly clicking, the two began a long distance relationship. But once the pandemic hit and it became even harder to see each other, they realized there was no use in waiting, so they got married. And now that vaccines have worked their magic, the couple was finally able to host a ceremony. Now, this is truly historic for the Jewish community and the brides know it. Walker shared, it feels like we shouldn't be groundbreaking, but I'm happy to have more people see this as it makes people feel there's a place for them too. Muzzle tub to the brides. And another group giving queer people hope is the old gays. I literally love these guys. Okay, let's talk about them. Made up of Robert Reeves, Mick Peterson, Bill Lyons, and Jesse Martin, the old gays are famous for their social media presence, boasting almost 3 million followers on TikTok. Are you guys 
Okay. Oh my God! I invented this. <laughs> Thank you, Father. And it was recently announced that the group will be partnering with Brian Graydon Media to develop their own unscripted docu series, taking a step outside of social media posts and viral reaction videos. You gotta be stoned to watch that. I wasn't stoned, but I watched it. I know, but I want to get stoned and watch it <laughs> and put it on the loop. <laughs> To Lyons, the group provides an important perspective to the community. He shared this. I think the most important thing is that we're educating people. 60 years ago, coming out was a real struggle. It really wasn't easy in the beginning. And as important as it is to remind us where we've been, Reeves knows it's just as essential to show where we can go. He said, they no longer fear getting old, particularly getting old as a gay person, because when they see us having so much fun about life at our age, it gives them hope. I mean, Andy, that could be you. An old gay in Palm Springs? On TikTok, I don't see why not. Exactly. With that news, <laughs> we should leave you and say goodbye. It's Andy Luani signing off here. And I'm Cheryl Lazar. Thank you again for hanging out with us as always. And be sure to check out Culture Q each and every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Live and on demand, right here on Reprise. <laughs>